In this video, we're going to talk about the properties of ionic compounds. Table salt is a very common ionic compound, and so if you can imagine the properties of table salt, that's going to be true for other ionic compounds as well. Here are the four properties that we are going to look at. First of all, ionic compounds are solids at room temperature. They have a high melting and boiling point. They're brittle, and then they're also going to conduct electricity. So let's start with that first one, that they're solid at room temperature. Ionic compounds are made up of ions that are attracted to each other with electrostatic attraction. This is an uh, attraction that's so strong that the ions hold together uh, and at room temperature, about 25 degrees Celsius, that's not enough to break them apart, so they stay together and they are solid. They're also going to form a crystal structure, and a crystal is a repeating pattern. This is how the ions are going to arrange themselves. It's kind of like wallpaper, I and mean, this is some really ugly wallpaper, but if we were to just to cut a section out of this wallpaper, we'd see that the exact same pattern is present, and that's the same thing with ionic compounds. Uh, for example, table salts, sodium chloride, is going to form a cubic structure, and if we were just to keep on cutting the sodium chloride apart, smaller and smaller pieces, we'd just keep on seeing cubes, but there's a lot of different crystals. Now, if I, I can actually zoom in on this crystal structure, I would see why it looks the way it does. So we can see that the ions themselves are kind of arranging themselves in a cube. So we have the cations and anions all lining up in that way. So our next property is that ionic compounds have very high melting and boiling points. Melting and boiling is the result of breaking apart the ions, so separating them from each other. So when we saw that cube of all these different circles together, if we could break them all apart, that'd be what melting and boiling is. It's really difficult to separate the ions in an ionic compound because of that electrostatic attraction. An example of this is table salt. And table salt has a uh, melting point of about 800 degrees Celsius, or about 1500 Fahrenheit. And so if we threw that into the oven, we certainly couldn't melt it because most ovens will go up to about 500 Fahrenheit or 260 Celsius. Even if we put it into a pan on the stove, we'd have a really hard time melting it. The next property is that ionic compounds are very brittle. Although they are hard solids, they don't really bend very well. And so if we were to take a hammer and actually hit this ionic compound with a hammer, we would see pieces break off and they would actually cleave very nicely in these straight edges. It goes along with that crystal structure and this type of fracturing uh, is going to be due to the positions of the ions and so the, since they're all lined up in this nice uh, this nice arrangement we'll have this cleaving effect where the shape continues on. Okay the last property here is that ionic compounds are going to conduct electricity only when they are liquid or they're dissolved. So here is some water and if we were actually to kind of sprinkle some salt into this water what would happen is that the salt would dissolve and when the salt dissolves we'd see the ions actually breaking away from each other. So remember that an ionic compound is where ions are joined together. When something dissolves they actually break apart and they actually become surrounded by water. Now electricity is actually defined as flowing electrons or moving electrons. So here's our electron here and usually they're moving through a wire. What electrons need is something to flow through. They really kind of need a vessel to be carried on, kind of like a boat or something. And what they can use is anything with a charge. And so since these ions have a charge, they can actually hitch a ride on the ions and flow across the water and be able to move from one electrode to another electrode. We won't get into anything more about how electricity works, but that's kind of the basic idea. They have to have something with a charge to move across. And since all water, except pure distilled water, has ions dissolved in it, uh, you never really want to be in water during a lightning storm. And those are some of the properties of ionic compounds.